Welcome back to Roast Education, this is Ed. Today I'm going to be talking about Clover Health once more. The ticket goes by CLOV. Make sure to drop a like to this video to help the channel grow, subscribe, and leave notifications on. If you'd like to join our Discord, it's totally free. You can ask me questions, etc. It's in the description below. It's a way to interact with one another. Let's jump right into this one. I've covered Clover Health before in previous DDs quite extensively as well, so there is a bunch of videos. The last one is in the description below. But just for people who are here for the first time, I do very much recommend that you actually go ahead and watch the previous one. But Clover Health, Medicare Advantage plans have all essentials like hospital coverages, doctor visits, drug coverage, plus no cost extras like vision, dental, hearing coverage, etc. And so what Clover Health really is, it's it's a little bit of a Medicare twist, etc. Private insurance uh, really just works mainly in the US as a whole, so expansions there, I don't really see it uh, expanding, for instance, to Canada, the free healthcare there system. Anyway, original Medicare for Part A, hospital insurance, original Medicare pays 80% of your covered hospital expenses. Part B, medical insurance, original Medicare pays 80% off your covered doctor expenses. Private insurance. Part C, Medicare Advantage, you can replace original Medicare with a Part C plan like Clover Health. Part D, drug coverage. Original Medicare doesn't cover most RX drugs, but many Part C plans do. I did try to look into a new presentation that they might have had, but it looks like their actual presentation was since they were in IPOC. Uh, that was a while ago, and that was back in October 2020. Uh, Clover Health, and it's better. Try, it's trying to be better than the current incumbents at higher access at a lower annual cost. Um, why choose Clovers? They are uh, more of a technology company rather than insurance, consumer experience, U.S. healthcare system, physician experience, all under the Clover assistance. And of course, if you've been here around and looking into this video, looking into the sticker, you've heard about the Hinderberg research. And I did cover that, I think, two videos back. So I do recommend that you go ahead. And if you've been following this one for a bit, you have heard about Hinderberg research for Clover Health. If you haven't yet, Hinderberg Research is a short seller, uh, very much like what Shamath does every now and then. And what short selling is, is selling a stock and then buying at a lower price just because you think it's going to fall and you can pocket a difference. Very risky. So what they've done was they released a report, a massive report, and I did cover this one, I think, two videos ago or a video ago with responses, with allegations, everything in between. It's found in the previous video, so I'm not going to go through that again um and yeah so they got that and the sec file sec ended up saying okay we're gonna go ahead and investigate this company and that i believe this is still going on and a part of that i believe is that why shamath has been very quiet about clover health and you get to see that there is also a lot of criticism especially when he came out and says you know it's now apple plus google versus facebook my short is paying off and everyone was like hold on weren't you with gamestop against short sellers like what is going on are you shorting Clover Health too? And I think these are savage a little, just because Clover Health is actually dropping down. And uh, this this person here really cracks me up. Three weeks ago, short sellers are scumbags, and they've been screwing the retailers for decades. Today, my short is paying off. So it is a little bit of hypocritical, I gotta admit. But it looks like there's no updates that he's giving about Clover Health. And what I'm suspecting is that, well, first off, he's not a CEO, right? Um, or at least he, he is part owner, but he's not the one running the entire thing. And a big part of that is that perhaps what I'm what I'm understanding is perhaps that the this SEC or his lawyers are actually telling him not to get involved into this and answer while the investigation, current investigation is still going on. So that is my speculations going on right now. But anyway, let's jump right into the earnings. So Clover health earnings uh, before i go to the earnings they do have a conference by the way on march 10th at 10 55 a.m and this is in uh the barclays global healthcare conference but in terms of or if of earnings they actually missed the earnings guidance that they've set before and institutions aren't liking the stock recently they've been selling by a lot morgan stanley threw up a threw half of their positions out or a third of their positions uh ontario healthcare or sorry, Healthcare of Ontario Pension Funds, that gone. I think the only one that has been adding was Virtue Financial on the 24th, and I'm pretty sure they already read it, uh, at least they read their entry. Uh, and things are looking like a lot of people are flocking out. It's a lot of institutionals. Of course, that wasn't the case back at the end of January. So a massive kind of change there in terms of institutional buyers. And um, by the way, I'm going to make uh, an update on this one on the weekend, and I'll, t I'll tell you why later on. Insiders... 
it's been quiet there. And let's read a little bit off their earnings. So their earnings grew 46% year over year to $673 million in 2020. They surpassed 32,400 lives under Clover Assistant Management at the year end, a 43% increase for year over year. 2020 was a difficult year for healthcare as our industry rose in numerous challenges posed by the pandemic. Nevertheless, it was a transformative year for Clover. By the end of the year, we had more than 58,000 members reported over $670 million in total revenue created our direct contracting entity. Clover Health Partners, we believe that Clover is perfectly positioned to be the pioneer of the new program, said Clover Health CEO Vivek Garpali. We built Clover Assistant to reduce variability on in physician decisions making our hands, uh, sorry, making enhance, uh, making and enhance our members' lives. A little bit of an issue there in terms of wording. As of the year end, approximately 32,400 members, or 56% of the total membership, were managed by PCP that was live on like Clover Health. This represents a 43% increase year over year, underpinned by our ability to expand coverage. We believe that the traction we have seen to demonstrate the value of Clover Health Assistant giving us conviction and our ability to scale up the platform, uh, both in Medicare Advantage and direct contracting. So we got there, we got, we got that information, the market doesn't like the earnings. Uh, again, they did miss their guidance, even though they've seen a bit of an increase. I'm not going to go so much in details, but uh, just in short, Currently, the net loss in millions for quarter four 2020 is 81.6 million net loss. And in full full year in 2020, it's 91.6 million. Now, quarter four 2019, it's 98.7 million in terms of net loss. So they're doing worse on a net perspective in this quarter for 2020 than 2019. Again, COVID plays a part of this. So just kind of speaking about this, well, where do you think this one is going to go? Before we actually go ahead and start talking about, well, where, where are we going to where are we going to see this one blow? I want to go quickly and see, well, what about the market cap? They are a $3.35 billion company. So we're not talking about a small company. Price over sales is 5.38. The average on SP500 is almost around three. So it's a little bit oversold there, or sorry, a little bit overvaluated. In terms of the price over book on Pinviz, it shows 117. So that shows undervalued on the price over book. So it's fair price, generally speaking. Come to come into the question on, well, let's first take the technical analysis and then start looking into what I think about this one. So before moving on towards the technical analysis, make sure to drop a like to this video to help the channel grow, subscribe, and leave notifications on. And then when we're looking into a one-day perspective, we're seeing that, well, actually the MACD is negative, so that's a negative trend we're in. The ADX is at 34, suggesting a strong negative trend that we're in currently, and momentum is heavily negative at negative 3.79. The entire line really just looks like a really painful downward trend. And in terms of moving averages, it looks like they're all dropping down. Even if it goes up to the top, the Bollinger Bands is at 1409. Uh, the moving average band is expected to trade on the top 1233, 1121 in the middle, and 1009 in the bottom. But it hasn't traded within there for a while. So things aren't looking good there. Stochastic Fast and Stochastic Slow are saying, hey, maybe accumulation might be soon. In terms of Fibonacci retracement, it shows significant resistance at 1020, 1155. 1264, 1374, 1529, and 1727. Current support is at the 802. There's not much to see here. In, even in terms of supports, we, this is a new territory for this one. So a significant resistance on just price line action. We're looking at 906. Above there, we're looking at 1015, uh, 1049. And we're looking up at 1146. Above there, you're looking at 1309, and then 1390, and then 1442. And then maybe there, 1537. And now comes to the question to, well, is there any trends before the question on what I think about this one? Well, I do think that it's actually a continuous uh, downtrend that we're looking something around this area here. And that's a little bit dangerous because I believed in Clover Health. I still believe in Clover Health there. But what level do I think it's probably going to be, uh, it's going to start bouncing off? I would probably say it will be in the sevens or the six, and I'll make an updated video on this one on the weekend to revisit this and see what kind of things are happening. Now, two things are happening for this one. One, well, actually three things. One, how will changes to Medicare or the health system through Biden's plans will affect this one's operations? Two, the current investigation that the SEC file uh, that the SEC has on them, what will the outcomes be? Because remember, Hinderberg is usually wrong but sometimes is right or short sellers report generally um, 
and there is a lot of proofs. Uh, for instance, uh, I can't remember what coffee brand it was, but they ended up cooking their entire uh, books and ended up just getting delisted, and well, it's gone. And it was Hinderberg. I think it was uh, Lind Coffee, Kindle Coffee, something like that. And there was also the EV, the Kindy, whatever. The list goes on. Um, and then there was a third the part, which is uh, their missed guidance. What's going to happen there? How is their profits going to be looking? And those are things against Clover Health as of the moment. Now, where do I see it in 110 years? Well, it is hard to predict the healthcare market and something like Medicare for all can really change things around. Uh, some changes to health infrastructure, health insurances, etc. Institutions are scared. So I think it's going to continue dropping until you get accumulation period. You need that accumulation period and we haven't hit there yet. And I'll update you on the weekend. What do you think about the sticker? Make sure to mention down in the comments below. Share, subscribe and like. Have a wonderful day.